Hey class, it's Mr. Woodbury. In this part of the final review, we're going to go over the two mean test and its non-parametric alternative, the Mann-Whitney test. Let's jump in. Uh, we know this is a hypothesis test because we're asked at a certain level of significance to test a claim and we're comparing one group, one population to another population. Plants that were grown in chisel plowed versus no-till. Now, you have to figure out whether this is a pair difference test or a two mean test. And this, is, this one's a little challenging because the sample sizes are exactly the same. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine plants of each type. And so now we have to figure out, is there a one-to-one -one relationship? And there's nothing in the problem that says that these two were taken from the same exact area or they're the same plant treated two different ways. There's no one-to-one -one matchup here. It says the data represent the number of pods on a random sample of soybean plants for the two plot types. So we went into the two plot areas, we selected nine of each type. There's no one-to-one -one matchup here. This is a two mean test, or at least it seems like a two mean test. Now for the two mean test, we have to have normality and no outliers for each of the two samples. So um, we're gonna let StackCrunch do that for us. We're gonna write it up as if it's a two mean test. And if the StackCrunch tells us that the conditions fail, then we'll switch out and perform the Mann-Whitney test instead. So step one, again, for every one of these two sample tests, you have to tell me which group is gonna be group one. Now in the claim, it says that the number of pods for chisel plowed is less than no till. So I'm gonna let the chisel plowed group be population one. The null hypothesis is mu one equals mu two. The alternate hypothesis will compare those same two things, but what sign belongs between them? Well, it says that chisel plowed, the mean number for chisel plowed is less than no till. I'm gonna use the less than sign. If I had let no-till be first, then essentially my alternate hypothesis would have to have the greater than sign because chisel less than no-till is the same as no-till is greater than chisel. But if you selected no-till as group one, you're gonna be very tempted to just grab that less than sign and put it in H1 and you'll have it exactly backwards. Um, in the problems in the book, if you end up with an extremely high p-value, it could be because you've got them backwards and you wanna go back and make sure you have them really consistent. A high p-value comes from a couple of things. One, you've got them backwards, or two, the person who um, did the research actually had it, it was actually the reverse situation of what they were expecting to see. So um, either is possible, but you always wanna make sure that you haven't made that mistake. If the conditions here fail, I'm gonna to have to come back and change all of these mu's to be m's for mediums. The level of significance given in the problem is 0.05. And again, it looks like a two mean test, but I'm a little concerned because when I look at each set of data, there's one number that's really different from the others. There's a good chance that that five is gonna be an outlier. And if there's an outlier, we can't do the test. Also, that outlier looks pretty extreme. And a lot of times when you have an extreme outlier, that can throw off the normality as well. But typically where we're gonna see the problem is with the box plot. All right, let's go to StackCrunch and try this out. We've got the data already loaded here. This is Zoom final review. It's inside of your StackCrunch group. And I'm in columns 13 no-till and 13 chisel. Remember, we selected chisel to be population one. Stat, T, two sample with data. Select chisel to be first. Select no-till to be sample two. The null hypothesis we leave as mu one minus mu two equals zero. Again, that's just another way of writing mu one is equal to mu two. For H A or R H one, we need to select the less than sign. Scroll down to where it says optional graphs and tables. And what we wanna have is the box plot and the Shapiro-Wilk normality test. 
The box plot will show us if there are outliers. The normality test will let us know whether each sample is normally distributed or not. Let's compute. Right, let's take a look at these results. And on the first page, there's already a problem. For the chisel population or the chisel sample, the p-value is below 0.05 for Shapiro Will. That means that the data are not normally distributed. So we can actually stop there. But if we look at the next screen, we can also see there was a pretty extreme outlier as well, that value five that we thought. So we can't do this as a two mean test. So I'm gonna throw that away. I'm gonna start over. Stat, non-parametrics, man Whitney. This is set up pretty much the same way. Pick chisel first, no till second. The median differences are zero, M1 minus M2, and HA is less than. Press compute. And there we see our P value, 0 0.0506. That's really close to what we were uh, aiming at, but it's still a little higher than that. So let's go back to the screen with the problems. Back in the middle here. Okay. So uh, I'm going to write down the p value while I have it in mind. p value equals 0 0.0506. When you perform any of these alternate tests, all you have to show me is the p value. Don't worry about the test statistic. Let's edit this a little bit. Instead of two mean, now we're working with man Whitney. For the null hypothesis, M1 equals M2. The two medians are equal. For the alternate hypothesis, M1 is less than M2. All right, now we can continue with the problem. We compare the p-value to the level of significance. It's not smaller than that, so we're going to end up re failing to reject HO. That means that we don't have enough evidence to conclude that the null hypothesis is not true. And that also means that there is not sufficient evidence to support, if that's our abbreviation for that, to save our writing, there's not sufficient evidence to support that the median number of pods for chisel plowed is less than no till. Now notice I replaced the word mean in that claim with median because now this is a test comparing medians, not means. Right, let's move on to the other problem. This is a problem involving summary and there's really no conditions that we can check here other than the samples are small enough compared to the population size. If we multiply 20 by the number of chairs, 20 times 25 is 500. We were assuming the manufacturer is making a lot more than 500 chairs. So uh, we can go ahead and do this as a two mean test. We're test the claim, we've got a level of significance and here it says the two methods have the same mean assembly time. So we're saying that the mean of one population is the same as the mean of the other. That's a two mean test. Population one, um, our choices are between method A and method B and the claim doesn't list either of those first. So we'll just go in the order that we read them in the problem. Population one, I'll let be method A. The null hypothesis, mu one, equals mu2 for H1, we're comparing the same two things, but uh, what sign belongs there? There's no suggestion that A is higher or lower when compared to method B, and so in that case, it's a two-tail test. Mu1 is not equal to mu2. Now again, remember, when we see that not equal to sign, that means that we've gotta be really careful with our conclusion. The conclusion is not going to mention that the means are the same. It's going to mention that the means are different, not equal to means different than. Level of significance in this problem is 0.01. This is a two mean test. 
Now we can go to StatCrunch and compute this as a two mean test with summary. Stat T two sample with summary. By the way, if you pick the wrong one, say you pick data, it's gonna ask you to pick the columns. You're not gonna have those available to you. So you're gonna know you're in the wrong place. I should have made note of the information in the problem before I got here. I need the mean standard deviation and size for each group. Each group has a size of 25. Um, for method A, the mean was 6.5 minutes. The standard deviation was 1.30 minutes and the size was 25. For chair, for method B, 6.2 was the mean, 1.36 for standard deviation, also 25 for the size. Okay, now we can go ahead and compute this. Sample mean 6.5, standard deviation 1.30, Sample size 25. Onto the second sample, 6.2 for the mean, 1.36 for standard deviation, also 25 for size. Don't change the calculation options. Leave the null hypothesis as equal to zero. We already have the right sign for H1, not equal to, so we're ready to compute. And there's the results. Our test statistic T is 0.80. And the p-value is 0.4292. Let's go back and finish this off. Comparing that to the level of significance, it's not lower than 0 0.01. So we fail to reject HO. And whenever we fail to reject HO, that means the conclusion is there is not sufficient evidence to support what H1 says. H1 is the two means are different. So we didn't have enough information, enough evidence to prove that the two means were different than each other. We assumed that they were equal, we couldn't prove otherwise. Okay, that's the end of this video. In the next one, we're going to move on to chapter 12. We'll take a look at the goodness of fit test.